It is amazing the hoops that people jump through just to be able to try and eat the carbs without a blood glucose spike. The types of food that raise your blood sugar, that's your blood glucose the most, are going to be the carbohydrates. You have regular starch and you have resistant starch. Resistant starch is a lot like fiber in that we don't break it down, we can't digest it. By definition, it resists digestion. If we can't absorb any nutrition through the small intestine, then why are we consuming it? The great thing about resistant starch is that your body can't break it down to release the glucose. So the starch we can break down and digest is potentially a problem because it raises blood sugar, but the starch we can't digest and break down properly is better because it doesn't raise our blood glucose. Think about that. So the resistant starch stays in your gut and it behaves like fiber. It feeds the good bacteria in your gut. Obviously, this is the case because once it hits the colon, we partially ferment this stuff, both the fiber and the resistant starch, to generate short-chain fatty acids like butyrate, propionate. But if this is so important, we do actually derive short-chain fatty acids like isobutyrate isopropionate, valorate from animal proteins. And when we are in nutritional ketosis, we are feeding all of our gut, all of our colonocytes that line the colon, no problem. And so we don't need things like fiber and resistant starch in our diet for that benefit. Foods that contain a lot of resistant starch include Irish potatoes, sweet potatoes, yam, green bananas, green plantains, beans and peas and tiger nuts. But unfortunately, once you cook these foods, you destroy the resistant starch in them. But after cooking your potatoes, rice and pasta and other starchy foods in water, something interesting happens. When you cool these foods in the fridge overnight, some of the regular starch that would raise your blood sugar gets turned into a different type of resistant starch. And then if you heat up these foods and cool them again, you get even more of this resistant starch. Wow, so let's cook our food, our starchy carbs, over and over again, letting it cool down in between so we can produce something we can't digest. Or we could eat species appropriately and never have to worry about our blood glucose, type 2 diabetes or body composition. So although resistant starch has some sort of science behind it, the actual effects on your body and your blood glucose can be tested, and many people have. In fact, the video from Serious Keto did it with potatoes and rice. I'm going to do a baseline blood glucose and ketone reading. I'm going to eat the potatoes. Then I will do blood glucose readings at 30 minutes, 60 minutes, and 2 hours. When he did his potato test, his baseline blood glucose was 96 milligrams per deciliter. 8.48 a.m. Blood glucose... 96. And here are my potatoes. So I'm on the third one right now. And uh, I'm already getting kind of sick of it. We are at the one hour mark. Blood glucose test. 191.